Hello, this is lesson five, part three. And in this part of our lesson, we are going to be collecting evidence from the SIM. So the SIM is a model. Scientists use models all the time to try to understand what their data is telling them. We're going to use the SIM the way that a scientist would to collect evidence about how the air temperature is affected by an ocean current that flows by. That's the question that we're really wondering about at this point. So what you're gonna need, you're going to need something to write with, something to write on. You'll need someone to talk about all of your awesome ideas with. And if you have access to the Ocean's Atmosphere and Climate Sim from Amplify Science, then you can use that too. But if you don't, it's okay because I will do the Sim activity on this video and so you can follow along. Okay, so this is what the SIM for Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate looks like. There is, this is a, just an image. This is in map mode, the surface map mode, and I have it set to show us the temperature. If you look down here, you can see that there are location sensors and you can actually click on those and drag them up. This is location four and this is location five. Here are the directions. Open the SIM, follow the instructions to gather evidence. And what we're gathering evidence for is to answer the question about how ocean currents affect the air temperature of the locations that they pass. So the first step is select current map mode. And then for temperature view, select surface and then place sensors at location four and location five. And then take a moment to jot down in your notes what the starting temperature of those two locations are before you do anything else. Okay, so I've just opened the sim so that you can see what this looks like. So you'll notice over here that I'm already in current map, which is what I wanna be in, and I need to change the temperature view to surface. Okay, so here are our location sensors. We're gonna drag one to location four, and when I do that, you'll see Whoa, this really cool thing appears. It shows some arrows and it shows land, it shows water. It shows you the temperature in three locations. It shows you what the temperature in Celsius of the air, it tells you the temperature in Celsius of the land, and it tells you the temperature in, again, Celsius for the water because scientists use the metric system and you're a scientist, so you're gonna use it too. So then we're gonna take our other location and we're going to place it here, our other sensor and put it in that location. One cool thing is that if you wanna move these around, you can grab them and they move and that was supposed to go with it. So there's a little bit of a glitch. So maybe it'll work or maybe it won't. I'll just put it back here. It tells you what the latitude of these two locations are. And if you look at them, you can see that they are both 38 degrees north of the equator. So what does that tell us? it tells us that they are receiving the exact same amount of energy from the sun. And if you look at their air temperatures, yeah, their air temperatures are the same, 17.2 degrees Celsius at location four and 17.2 degrees Celsius at location five. So they have the same air temperature. What we're gonna see is how does the ocean current moving past this location affect it? Okay, so, Let's go back to our directions. After you've recorded the temperature of the, the air at location four and five, then press play. And then observe how the motion of the currents in the side view. And if I kind of go, this is what the side view looks like. You'll be able to see um, the temperature of the ocean there in the side view. What's happening to that? and um, observe how the energy is being transferred between the water and the air. You might want to do this a couple of times. There's, there's no need to limit yourself on how many times you do this activity in the sim because it's actually really fascinating. You'll notice that there are these three arrows. So let's just take a look at those real quick before you go off and do it. This big giant arrow is showing you energy from the sun to the surface. How much energy are they getting? And if you look at these, you can see they are identical. But what if I took a location of the sim, let me open it up again, that was from maybe a different location. So if I take this one and I drag it to somewhere by the equator, and if I look here, do you see how much larger that arrow is from where it was at sensor five? 
this location is receiving more energy from the sun than location four is. Okay, but we want to go back because for this, we actually want them to be getting the same exact amount of sun or the same amount of energy from the sun. Okay, so the next thing is that um, go ahead and run the sim for like two minutes. And after you're done, record the temperature of the air. And it's important to do a couple of things. One, record the air temperature for both locations and also record if it was next to a cold current or a warm current. Okay, so at this time, go ahead and get on the sim yourself and explore it. Hit play, set yours up the same way I have this and see what kind of data you get. Okay, and if you are going to stay with me, then let's go ahead and do this together. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will press play. And you'll see all these little currents moving around. I wonder if I can move this now. No, it still doesn't want to move. That's fine. Um, but it's okay. We can actually see enough of what's going on here. Maybe I can move that a little bit anyway. Okay, so you can see that the water is moving up the continent here. Let's let me move my picture. There we go. Okay, so now I have it at two times. Let's move me down there. Whoa, this is moving really fast. Um, this definitely looks like a warm current moving past location five. And what about location four? Um, it looks like the current here is moving from the pole. This definitely looks like cold water coming past location four. So let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that so we can see that a bit better. If I look at this, let me try one more zoom. Okay, let's move this up a little bit so we can see it. If we look at this very carefully, we can see that energy is transferring from the sun to the surface and then from the surface to the air. That's what we learned about in lesson two. If you haven't watched lesson two, go back and watch it. It will help this make a lot more sense. And once this air is being heated by the surface, um, we can see that some of the energy from the air is actually getting lost to the water, which makes sense because the water is much colder than the air. This water moving down from the pole is colder than um, the the location it's passing and so some of the energy from that warmer air is transferring to the cold water just like we saw in our experiment with the cup that had cold water and energy from the air transferred to the cup and then in this one we can see the opposite is true we can see oops it doesn't want to move past the picture that's fine um, we can see here that this water is really warm and as it's flowing past it's actually heating the air and that air is getting so warm that it's actually able to transfer some of the energy back to the land. So if you lived here in this location, you would have a warmer air temperature than you would if you lived here at this location, even though they're getting the same exact amount of energy from the sun. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause our video and um, welcome back everyone who did the activity on their own. Okay, scientists, welcome back. Let's discuss what we learned and what we discovered as we explored the sim together. So what we wanna know is why is the temperature shown at sensor four different from sensor five? What is happening there? What we saw at sensor four is that sensor four is near cold current and sensor five is near a warm current. So how is that going to affect what happens at both places? On this image, you can see this cold current moving down from the pole, and you can see this warmer current moving up from the equator. The equator is getting so much energy from the sun, and the pole is getting so much less. And so the surface of the pole is getting heated with less energy than the surface at the equator. The thing about water, is that it doesn't stay where it is. And so as it moves away, it brings that energy with it. And that actually heats places on the planet that normally wouldn't get that much energy from the sun. So location five is getting warmer. So sensor four near this cold current, the colder water is moving away from the pole. Sensor five is near a warm current with warmer water moving up from the equator. So in conclusion, what we can take away from this is an understanding that because sensor four is near that cold current and their warmer water, that actually caused energy to transfer from the air to the water. 
And so the air is losing energy because as the cold current is coming by, the warmer air loses energy to the cold current. So the air temperature at that location is actually going to be a little colder than it would be if there wasn't an ocean there. The sensor 5 is near a warm ocean current. So as the warm ocean current moves past it, the water is so much warmer than the air that it transfers energy to the air, which makes that location have a warmer air temperature than it would normally have. Okay, let's look at Buenos Aires and Cape Town. At the beginning of this lesson, I showed you this picture and we wondered about it. It was a little bit of a puzzle how these two locations on our planet that are, that are at the same latitude might have the same or different air temperatures. So using what you learned in this lesson from the sim and from the experiment, how would you complete the following sentences? Okay, here we go. So let's look at Buenos Aires. You'll notice that current A is going right past it and we can see current A starts up here at the equator that's getting lots of energy from the sun. And as that warm water moves away from the equator, it takes all that energy with it and some of that moves right past Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires has warmer water than you would expect from a location at that latitude. So if the water is warmer than the air, will energy transfer from the water to the air or from the colder air to the warmer water? Okay, so if you said in Buenos Aires the ocean transfers energy to the air, then you're right. That's exactly what we see happening. So Cape Town's the opposite. Cape Town has this cold ocean current that's moving down past Cape Town from the pole. Current B originates at the poles. So at Cape Town, the ocean is colder and the air is warmer than the ocean. So as the cold ocean moves past Cape Town, some of that energy from the air at Cape Town actually gets transferred to the ocean because it's warmer than the ocean. So let's fill in the sentence. In Cape Town, the air transfers energy to the ocean. Okay, so now that we know that there's some energy being transferred from current A to Buenos Aires, and some energy from the air being transferred to the current at Cape Town, then let's look one more time at these two claims that we looked at at the beginning. So prediction A says these two cities are at similar latitudes, getting the same amount of energy from the sun. Therefore, I would expect the ocean surface temperatures to be the same. And prediction B said, no, the currents moving past these two locations are going to be different. So let's have a discussion. If you have a partner, then I'd love for you to discuss with your partner um, what, which of these two claims you were thinking is best supported by all the evidence that we've collected today. And be ready to share some of your ideas with your classmates, with your teacher, with um, your friends that you're going to call and talk about all this cool science. And I will see you in part four of lesson five coming up next.